Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you've not been here yet, I'm Christina and I'm a Jesus-loving, homeschooling, homesteading mom of three. I really appreciate you coming back and I hope you'll stay and be a part of this community of folks who like to share ideas and encourage one another in all things home. I'm excited this month to be bringing you a video each week for the Every Bit Counts Challenge presented by Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead. Last year, I was inspired by her challenge, and I was able to add a good bit to my pantry and freezers. I hope this helps keep you inspired through the month, and if you're documenting along with us, I do hope you leave a comment below so we can all benefit from your ideas, too. It's always a blessing to see and hear what others are doing to put nutritious food away for their families. Have you heard of body doubling? It's kind of like a buddy system for getting work done. I sometimes find it motivating to play a video like this in the background while I spend time in the kitchen. In addition to the Every Bit Counts Challenge, I do have some homeschool curriculum reviews coming up for the month. Please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss it. In this video today, I'm going to show you some fun stuff that's been going on around the homestead this week, as well as the food we've put away for when there's a lot less green outside. It will be here before we know it, I know. This week, um, we moved our meat birds from their brooder outside to their chicken processing, um, to their, not to the chicken processing, but to the chicken tractors. That's something that kids always help with, and my husband and Carter put the shade cloth over them for this, you know, these hot summer days to try to help keep them cool. But my husband moves them every day so they have a fresh piece of grass. And while mowing outside, we use a push mower, and the kids take turns mowing a little bit. My husband's trying to teach them how to take care of some of that, but he takes care of the majority of it. But while mowing, my daughter found this snake, and she just had to... See if she could hold it. We interrupt this broadcast to remind you to check your squash. It's what's for dinner every day, all summer. Um, also, this week we made some farmer's cheese as we often do. I'll show you that a little later on. And something new I tried I had run out of dishwashing gel that I typically use, and I had seen a lot of things on TikTok. I don't know if you've seen it, but um, there's a lot of DIY dishwasher powder recipes using citric acid and borax and washing soda, and um, I decided to go ahead and give it a try, but I have found that it clumps. Does yours clump? Do you use it? Because if you have any tricks for me, I was thinking like maybe one of those um, brown sugar keeper things, like what if you put that in there? Would that help prevent it from clumping? Because it's not very convenient when you have to take a knife and jab at it. But I have noticed that the gel works fine and there's no issues with it at all. So my dishes are clean. So that, or not the gel, I'm sorry, but the powder. There's no issues there. What the video isn't going to show you today is me wasting time. I have preserved things in the past that have just taken up space on our shelves, made me feel guilty when I looked at it because I wasn't going to use it. So there are definitely things that I know this year I'm not going to bother canning, or freezing. And I'm wondering what are some things that you've wasted time on? I think that might make for a fun video later on. But one thing that's on our shelf that I am not going to can again is squash. I thought I would just go ahead and add it to a bunch of stir fries and stews and who knows what else, but I did not do that. So anyway, I'm just not going to waste my time this year. Before we dive into the food preservation, could you do me a favor and tap the like button? I know that when someone has liked a video, they found value in it, and it motivates me. So if you don't mind to hit that for me, I'd appreciate it. But if you've got your hands dirty and you're in the middle of a project, I get it. Don't worry about it. All right, so this week, some things that I have taken care of. I have dehydrated and frozen some kale. I saw that Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead had this handy little tool that she uses to like go along the stem of her kale. But what I do is I just use my hand and pull along the stem of the kale, the leaves, or sometimes if it's a smaller piece and the stem is not that tough, I will just fold it over and cut it with a knife. But she uses her stems, she said, in stir fry. And we love to make stir fry. So I'm going to save my stems this year. It's something I've never done. Another thing that we have preserved are peas. These are the kind of peas that you eat the pot and everything. We have eaten them fresh and eaten them fresh and eaten them fresh. And I need to go ahead and put them back before any more get ruined because a lot of these have started to turn brown. So I went ahead and froze these. I blanched them for about a minute and a half, put them in the ice water bath, and then put them into quart jars in the freezer. And I plan on throwing those in stir fry. 
we harvested a lot of sage this year. My sage bush had just blossomed. I mean, it, it was huge. Unfortunately, it did start flowering early, which isn't ideal because the um, sage leaves, when it starts to flower, tend to lo lose their potency. So if you can, stay ahead of that and trip up, trim off those flowers as much as possible. Um, and that's true of all herbs, I think, except maybe dill. I'm not sure. But I know at least the sage, if you trim the flowers off, it's supposed to make for a more flavorful and enjoyable herb. So um, anyway, we've done a lot of sage this year. I, you see here um, where I am putting it through a food processor so that it's already chopped and, put, and I can put it in the freezer. I've got regrets. I'm not going to do that again. The food processor really did not work very well for that, and next time I'm just going to use a knife. I thought I would save some time, but really it didn't. I hate watching the food processor. I don't know about you, but half the time I'm glad I used it, and the other half the time I'm like, well, I learned, didn't I? Just take what you can from it and move on. Um, so in addition to freezing um, maybe a quart of sage for the freezer, that should last a very long time, I did take six bundles of it and hung it up to dry in our house also. I've gone ahead and um, patted up some extra hamburgers. I did that the other day. We were going to have hamburgers for dinner, and I went ahead and thawed out enough meat to make it for last for three dinners. So we had one that night, and then we had patties for two more dinners. And I really don't like touching ground beef. It grosses me out. So it is nice in my mind just to kind of get it all done at once. So I did hamburgers. And then I also made meatballs using a recipe from Spend with Pennies. The recipe calls for Parmesan, but I'm using some farmer's cheese. I only need about a half cup, so I'm just going to crumble it up in there. I don't know if you love Gemma Stewart, but I love her. I like to put her videos on in the background while I do work around the house. And she's just such a loving and inspiring soul. Um, gives so much grace, and she just sometimes poses thought-provoking questions, which I enjoy regarding the homestead or the, you know, just the systems of, of ways of doing things in the house. So I really appreciate her. And she had mentioned before, um, and she does freezer meal bundles and things like that, but she had mentioned before something like make one, freeze one, or something like that. But what you do is, you know, you would double a recipe and put some back in the freezer for a lazy day or a busy season, or even if you just want to be able to spend some extra time enjoying your kids. And maybe it's not even busy. It's just a gift to yourself. It's like a vacation when you can just pull something from the freezer and let it thaw a bit and pop it in the oven. What a gift that is to yourself. Okay, because I got 90. Oh, I have an extra in this row. I got 91. Okay, I'm, I'm happy with that. 91 meatballs. I'm happy. I'm going to get these, get my hands washed. Yeah, and then you'll come see. Get my hands washed, put them in the oven, and then I have to go see a daddy long leg. Sealy, sealy, sealy. Put these in the oven for 18 to 20 minutes. Meatball recipe I pretty much did just as it called for. However, instead of using Parmesan cheese, I used some of that farmer's cheese I was telling you about. And instead of using beef and ground pork, as the recipe calls for, I just used beef because I don't have any ground pork at the time. So it was a blessing to be able to go ahead and make those meatballs. I knew I had to go out of town, and actually that's where I am at today. All right, so today I'm making farmer's cheese. It's a real simple cheese. You can just throw it on top of everything. We put it, we've put it in hamburger helper, like homemade hamburger helper in the Instant Pot. We've put it in our scrambled eggs and our burritos. I mean, it's a cheese. It's got salt. It's good. It's real easy to make. So this is, I mean, that's the reason why I choose to make this cheese, because we like it. It's versatile, and it's just really super simple. I mean, really easy. So we've put the milk in this pot, and we will heat it to about 190 degrees. Um, then we'll take some vinegar. Um, you would use one fourth cup of vinegar per half gallon of milk. I've got about one and a half gallons of milk, so I'll use about three quarter cup of vinegar. And um, you let that set for 15 minutes, and then you would put it into, well, this is how I do it anyway. I wet a cheesecloth and pour it into the colander. Let the whey strain out. You'll be surprised if you've never made cheese before by just how much whey there is. Um, so we let the whey strain out. I usually um, 
mix a little bit of that way back in. I add three teaspoons of salt for one and a half gallons of milk. If I were doing just a half gallon of milk, I would use one teaspoon of salt. Some people like to add herbs and things like that too. I've done it before, but I just like it to be plain so we can do more with it. Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna do that and then just form it into a ball and I press it between uh, two pie plates. I put, a, I put the wheel of cheese in the pie plate and put another one on top and I stick it in the fridge for a couple hours and then I transfer it to a container. So it's a crumbly cheese at the end for me, it's like a feta. Um, so that's about how we use it, something like that. You could throw it on top of salads, um, put it in lasagna, lots of options. So that's what I'm doing today and I would take the extra whey in the future, um, or I'm sorry, in the past I have used extra whey to put in homemade things like soups and breads and things like that. but. It's just been a really busy season and I don't know that I'm going to be making anything that's going to need it. So I'm just going to take it and give it to our chickens. They love it. Um, they get fed and we are happy with our cheese and everyone's happy. So we'll just let this milk heat up and then I'll show you the rest of it. Okay, so here I am pouring the whey out into the cheesecloth. Remember, there's a strainer underneath that, and underneath the strainer is a bowl to contain the whey. I'm being really careful because if this cheese would happen to splosh into the um, whey there, I would get burnt. So I'm trying to be very careful not to let that whole thing slip out. Oh, it's going. All right, so it went out gently, no splashes, hoorah. You can see there's some scalded milk at the bottom of that pot. Um, I can just scrape that out pretty easily usually. I'm gonna go ahead and lift that up, allow that way to continue to straining off. Do you see all the way? That's a lot for the chickens. Um, it's nice to leave some whey in there because otherwise it's going to be a little bit more rubbery, but the more whey you have, um, I think it makes a better texture, but it's a preference thing. So I'm gonna hang that to dry on my pot a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and add the salt. For every half gallon of milk you get, you get a half pound of cheese. So I used about one and a half gallons of milk, so this is about one and a half pounds of cheese, and the rest is whey. This can be used in soups, it can be used in pancake batter, it can be used in breads, but I'm feeding it to the chickens. So here I'm taking it out, I leave the cheesecloth there, I add my kosher salt, mix it in as best as I can, it's a little bit hard. This is about three teaspoons of salt, I mix it in as best I can, then I press the cheesecloth into the cheese, it's really hot so be careful, and then I'll put it between the pie plates and put it in the fridge. For every bit counts challenge, you're supposed to do at least one thing every day for the month of August. I didn't accomplish that because I did have to go out of town, but I did do double up a little bit and I was able to do a little bit of meal prep for when I went out of town, so I'm happy with that. Um, I also recently made a video on how I set up my kitchen for green beans for canning and it would be applicable to any anything else that you are pressure canning, but it just kind of shows how I have the flow of my workspace set up. Canning is so much more efficient and so much pleasurable when A, you start with a clean kitchen, B, you have cleared off your counters so that you really have space for all that you need because it is sometimes overwhelming whenever you're just surrounded by all that stuff. So I'm thankful that, you know, I now know just to don't dive right into the project, just go ahead and count as a part of the project. The first thing that you have to do 
it's to really get your kitchen ready. So I just wanted to show you how I set up my kitchen because it just goes so much smoother now than it did when I was first learning to can. And I think a part of that are the is the flow that I've developed in my kitchen for when I can. So if you want to see that, I'll go ahead and link that. Um, but it's just a quick little video, only a couple minutes long. I also canned recently um, this month. It was over 30 quarts of green beans. I don't remember exactly how many. I want to say maybe 32 or 35. But we have several jars of green beans now to put back. And, you know, if I have one every other week next year, then that'll be something from our garden. Every bit counts. Don't be discouraged. Keep going. If you liked it, please like, subscribe, and share. And enjoy this.